Sweetheart, thank you so much for using your First Amendment right to free speech to highlight this issue. Now, when you have tangible plans to utilize our legislative structure to tangibly help the people of Palestine, please let me know and I will eagerly look into them. Because I don't know if you knew this, but our current legislative structure allows for our president in the executive branch to be vetoed by two thirds of Congress in the legislative branch. And currently, more than two thirds of Congress supports Israel. Additionally, if in November, the GOP takes over the executive branch and one chamber of the legislative branch, they are going to control the judicial branch for the rest of our lives and probably for the rest of your children's lives and their children's lives because that's how authoritarianism works. Now, the judicial branch controls what's legal in this country. And if you would like to retain your freedom of speech to criticize your government, you would not want the GOP to be in charge of that motherfucker. So if you would like to secure any of the freedoms that you currently enjoy for yourself, then for your children and your children's children, the only choice you have is to vote for the Democrats in November to ensure that the GOP is defeated. And side note, the GOP wants to continue the genocide over there and start one here too. P.S. If by chance neither candidate on the GOP side or the Democratic side reaches 270 electoral college votes because of suppressed voter turnout in November, guess who gets to choose the president? The House of Representatives. And you know who controls that? Once again, the GOP. Now you don't have to like the reality of your choices, but that does not change them from being the reality of your choices. And the reality is you can either help the GOP win in November or help defeat the GOP. Those are your only two choices, sweetheart. Welcome to adulting. It's full of hard choices, but that's what it means to grow the fuck up.